Hey everyone, my name's Ashley, and I'm just going to run through a few things on the poll, um, what you would do to book your learners, first of all. So you need to log into the portal as usual, and what you would do is you would go to bookings, and then you would choose book controlled assessment, not external controlled. Sometimes that can be a little confusing. Obviously, this is once you have registered your learners, so your learners do need to be registered first. So once you come to book, you can search for your learners um, by batch number, first name, surname, product code, product title. So I'm just going to pop a batch in here to show you. So once you find the learner that you want to book, you just select them by ticking the little box and then click book controlled assessments. This will then show you the assessment topic that the learner will be booked onto. As you can see here, it's holiday plans. And we do advise you maybe make a note of this, take a screenshot just to ensure that you know exactly which topic your learner will be on. And then click confirmation. There is a little declaration here that you need to read through. Once you're happy, click confirm. And that will create the booking for your learner. You can download the assessment pack from here, which we were discussing earlier. And I'll just give you, I'll just show you exactly what is in that pack. So if you look at the bottom here, the following assessment materials are available for download. And then you can get a link. And this will just open up a zip file that you can then download. So there are things that you'll need to do um, for the assessment, putting pictures and files, etc. But all of that is within this additional guidance when you download it. Now you can go back and get this um, assessment pack if required. And to do that, you would go to bookends and then you would click view controlled assessment. Just enter the batch number, the learner's details, and find the learner that you've booked. So as you can see, the learner's coming up now that I've booked. And if you need to get the assessment material, you just click this button here, Assessment Material, and that will allow you to re-download the document. And you can also click View Bookings Report and download a report just confirming the learner's booking. You can also cancel your learner's booking from this screen as well. As you can see here at the bottom, Cancel Controlled Assessments. So you would tick the little boxes, select the learners, and then click Cancel Controlled Assessments, and that will cancel the booking. I'm just going to show you a, a, an example because there is a few things that you can tick on this to make sure the learner can be rebooked. So if you select the learner, click Cancel Control Booking. It does ask you to give a reason. And there's also a little box that you can tick here, which says, please tick this box to declare the learner has not seen or sat this assessment. So what if you tick this box, that will just allow for that learner to be rebooked for the same assessment again. So if they haven't seen or started any of the assessment, you would need to tick that. Obviously, if there was other reasons such as, um, you know, there was a technical issue or something like that, then you wouldn't tick that box. So once you've then booked your learner, what will happen is their details will move over to Surpass and a window will be opened in Surpass for six weeks. And this, this is the amount of time that the learner has to sit the assessment. Then after that six weeks, it will void. I'll go through the PASS system and the different screens that you would expect to see and how to use those. I will also show you how a learner will sit an assessment as well. So as we said before, once the booking is made, it will then transfer over to the SURPASS system. And this will initially show within the Invigilate screen. As we said, that will take around 15 minutes. So once you make the booking, log in as a pass and you will then see the booking within that 15 minutes. So, for example, if you can see this one at the top here, which I've previously booked in, and this is a practice test that we have in the system that I can show you. And the one that I've just booked actually has just appeared underneath. You can see that. So that's literally just, just came there now within about five minutes or so. So the Invigilate screen, this is a screen which you can kind of look at your test, what you've got booked in, what status are at. And you can also print an invigilation pack and get the learner key code. So I'm just going to show you a few of the tabs. So you've got the test name, you've got the state. The status of the exam will show you 
kind of what at what stage the exam is. So half already, you hover over the status, it will give you like a little explanation as well. So half already means that the exam is ready to start. You can have a green tick, which means that the learner has completed the exam and that it will then probably likely be in the mark screen. And um, you can get the red cross, which means the exam's been voided. Um, one down here, which is shown learner disconnected, and that could mean that the learner's possibly had technical issues and the exam has disconnected. Um, if that were to happen, um, just give our customer support team a call and they will kind of go through you know, what you need to do, what the best kind of way forward is if, if you do have any technical issues. So you've got your centre name, your subject, the start and end dates, which, like I said, it automatically will book a six weeks period. And that means you can log into this test anytime within that six weeks. Start and end time are just set to all day so that you can just kind of sit at any point. And then you've got your learner details as well. And you can use um, these different tabs at the top. You can filter them so you can kind of search for your learner's name by just clicking the little magnifying and clicking, you know, just search and I'll give you an example. So that'll just bring up any assessments that I've booked in for myself. So do use these filters to kind of locate the learner that you, that you need. So I'm going to show you how a learner would actually sit the assessment and I'm just going to do a, fill a couple of questions in so we can then put this into the mark screen. So what they will need is the key code. So you can either just copy that, write it down, or you can print an invigilation pack, um, which I've just mentioned here at the bottom. Print invigilation pack. I'll show you what comes up with that. So you can get an attendance register, invigilation report, so you can confirm what time the test started. If there was any disturbances or anything in the test, you can um, record it on there. And also you can get the key code. So if you wanted to print that out prior, you can. So otherwise you would just get the key code and then where you need to go to launch the exam. So if you go to the home page and click deliver test here at the bottom and that will take you to the launch test delivery page. And what you need to do on here is you need to go through HTML delivery, live test, click UK, enter the key code. Just worth mentioning that if you do want to change the colour, like if the learner did have a reasonable adjustment, you can do that here as well and change the colour of the screen. So once the learner is ready to start, you put the key code in and click OK. This will confirm the learner details. So just click Confirm, accept the terms, and then you can start the, the learner can start the assessment. I'm just going to go through and just answer some of the questions, like I say, just so I can get this in the mark screen and we can kind of go through the process. So the first half of the assessment, as we said earlier, is multiple choice. The learners would just go through section A and just go on through the multiple choice questions. Once you finish the section, they would just click finish section. Um, it will ask you to confirm if you would want to finish the section. And if there is some questions that have been missed, it will confirm. Between the sections, there is a break of 15 minutes. So you can obviously give this break to the learners. If not, you can just click resume test and that will just start section two. Section B, sorry. So the learners will then work through section B, which like a lot of this is kind of doing work on a document. So you would have to download a document, do the changes that it's asking, and then upload the document. So I'm just going to upload just kind of a test, just a test document, just so we've got some data in there when we're going in the mark screen. To go through the questions, you can click the numbers down the side or you can click the next button. So again, I will just upload a document.
person is going to finish the test. So we'll get, you'll get a message to say you've completed the test, you may now close the window. The assessment will now move into the mark screen. So the mark screen is where is the permission that the assessor will have and they will mark the assessment from in this screen. On the left hand side there is a little triangle which brings up the filters that you can search for your learner. So I'm just going to find that assessment that we've just completed there. Okay, so once you've located the assessment that you want to mark, you would highlight the assessment and then click Mark Script at the bottom. And this will open the learner assessment. So section A, um, as we said, these are the multiple choice questions. So just to confirm, these questions are auto-marked in the system, so you wouldn't actually need to mark these. But if you do want to say kind of if the learner has got the mark, you can click through the questions and it will say at the top. So these ones obviously I've just chosen any, but I've not got any mark for them. But for this one, I've got one out of one. So it will kind of confirm which ones are correct and which aren't. So what you would need to do is move to section B and this would be where you would need to mark. So if you can see down the side, there are little asterisks on the questions that need marked, so you know what's been done and what hasn't. And all of these do need to be complete before you submit the script. I'm just going to show you how you would do the marking. So for this question, as you can see, there are different learning outcomes and you need to mark each one. And these kind of match the questions that are in the task. You can also download a mark scheme. Um, you should get that within. You can get that within the assessment pack, and it it's not available in this one because it's a practice one. But in the proper exams, you can click this button here, download mark scheme, and that will also open the mark scheme to help you while you're marking. So what you would do is you would just go down the outcomes and you would assign the marks as required. You can also leave marker comments by clicking the marker comment button. And you can put a comment in there. This will only be available to the IQA and the EQA. It wouldn't be available for learners to view. You will still need to give your learner feedback on a learner feedback form, which is available to download on the website. Once you've left a comment and you put your marks in, you can then click assign mark and that will then take you on to the next question. If you want to view what marks you've given, you can click the mark in history. So I'm just going to go back to question one and the mark in history is this little um, clock underneath here. So if you click that, that will say how many marks you've assigned and also it will have your marker comment. If you want to read the full comment, you just need to hover over it and it will just show you what, you, what you've put. If at this point you have kind of marked it wrong or you want to change any of the marks, you can just go back into this learning outcome box, change the marks, and then reassign them by clicking assign, and that will change them. So you can kind of go through and change anything if required. So you just need to go through all of the questions, or I see mark them, assign the mark, leave a comment if required. I'm just going to show you in the assessment so when the learner uploads their document you can download it from this section here so you would download the learner document and obviously mark it from there so once you have went through and marked all of the questions what you then need to do is you need to submit the script and this will go to the iqa within the moderate screen there's also progress at the top here which tells you how much you've marked of the assessment just so you know that everything is complete before you do submit the script because once you, submit, once you have submitted the script, 
you can't go back and change um, unless it was to go back to mark, which can be done, and I will go through that with you. I'm just going to submit the script, and you'll just get a message to say, you know, you won't be able to change the marks after you submit this, and then that's submitted. So once you've done that, like I say, this will now move to the moderate screen, which is where the IQA will go to check that the marks given, you know, are correct and that they are happy to release those results. So I'm going to quickly show you that now. Okay. Just a, a quick note on this screen. If you can't find your learner, always look at the, there's, there's always a filter which is on the completed date, so it will only bring up assessments from the last month. So if your learner has done their assessment quite a little while ago, you may need to take that filter off. So we just click the button, click filter off, or you can put whatever date. So if you know, if you know what date the learner sat the assessment, you can just put that date in, and that will just bring up the assessment from that date. Just whatever's easiest for yourself. So once you locate the learner um, and you want to complete the IQA, all you need to do is click view responses. And this will open up the assessment again. So again, section A is auto marked, and you can look at the mark in history to confirm how many marks have been given, and it does state that it is computer marked. So when you go to section B, you would again look at the mark in history, see what marks have been awarded. You can read any comments that have been left um, by the assessor. If you don't agree with any of the marking and you want this to go back to the assessor to remark, you can do that. And what you would do is you would click flag for review. What this would do is it would send the assessment back into the mark screen. And the assessor can then go back into the mark screen and change the marks that have been assigned. So like I say, you would go through each question, obviously checking the marks, the mark scheme and making sure that everything has been marked correctly. You can also leave comments in here. Um, again, you would just go to the learning outcome assign, click mark a comment, write a comment and click assign. However, you do need to give IQA feedback via our IQA feedback form, which again, that is available on our website. If you are happy with the marks and everything that's given, you can just close out of the assessment and then you will need to release the result. So to do this, you just select the learner. You can select multiple um, by clicking control and then you know clicking the other learners if, if there is more than one that you want to release. And then you just click the release button here at the bottom. This will then release the result and it will send this to the EQA. So the EQA will then have access to this assessment within a screen that they have access to. They will then obviously mark it, um, or check it from there, and if they're happy with it, they will then arrange for the certificate to be released. But if there is any issues or the EQA doesn't need to pass anything back, what they can do is they can flag it for a remark. And if that happens, it will then go into this screen here, which is a remark screen. And basically, you would just enter the exam again by clicking view responses, and you can change the marks, you know, in accordance to what the EQA has advised, and then you can just resubmit it, and that will then go back to the EQA. So that's kind of an overview of the screens that you would need to use. 